they said, you're now in charge of Greece. The people at Loyal had proposed a job to almost everyone and that no one wanted to take it. People are happier when they use your products. By creating beauty products, you make, you make people more happy. Can you tell the difference in the brands? Not from uh, far away, right. but... Uh, <laughs> you take four-week vacation. Is that a requirement and be French? Is Mandatory. <laughs> what would you say is the secret to being a good business leader? The most important thing is to love what you do. Would you fix your tie, please? Well, people wouldn't recognize me if my tie was fixed, but okay. <laughs> Just leave, leave it, it this way. All right. I don't consider myself a journalist. And nobody else would consider myself a journalist. I began to take on the life of being an interviewer, even though I have a day job of running a private equity firm. How do you define leadership? What is it that makes somebody tick? As uh, archaeologists have discovered over the years, if you go back several thousand years, uh, there was cosmetics and other beauty products in Egypt and other yep. places in the Middle East. Uh, what are we doing to make people more beautiful today than they did thousands of years ago? You know, L'Oreal didn't exist uh, many, many thousand years ago. But uh, maybe you don't know that, uh, in fact, that the first uh, beauty product that uh, were discovered were discovered uh, 100,000 years ago. So 100,000 years ago, uh, men and women started to use, you know, a kind of makeup, a kind of uh, beauty treatments. So it's, it's a long, long story. Were they sold at department stores, or where did people buy those? You don't, <laughs> we don't know. So, yeah, they were kind of uh, Flintstone department store. Or right. <laughs> so um, what I assume it was mostly for women in those days, 100,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago. I was ago. not there, so, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm not sure, by the way. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that may, maybe uh, on the contrary. At that time, uh, maybe both uh, men and women were using uh, colors. Uh, I'm not an expert in cosmetics. I, it may be hard for people to believe. But I went uh, yesterday to a store to buy some of these cosmetics. Thank and, you very much. And for uh, your... the first thing that I happens when I go into department stores, I hear, I smell the fragrance of perfumes and so forth. And everything in cosmetics is always on the first floor mm -hmm. of a department store. Why is that? But first, because uh, you know, beauty products uh, bring traffic. So department stores or other stores, you know, for them, it's a great uh, opportunity to bring people to their store. Uh, and when they enter the store, they are at the, at the beauty uh, space, and uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, business opportunity. Okay. And secondly, why it smells fragrance? Because uh, people are testing. Okay. People are testing the, the products, and of course, it smells, smells great. So you should go more often to a department store. I, 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 it's a great place to right be. Right after this, I'll probably go back to another one. What about online? Is that a big biz part of your business now? Yeah, it's growing very, very fast. You know, it was uh, almost uh, nothing uh, five, six years ago. And, and now, uh, depending on the countries, it can be between uh, five, 10, uh, even uh, 20 or 30 percent. Are there certain countries where, let's say, cosmetics, perfumes, hair dye, skin lotions are sold more frequently than in other countries? Is it the United States where people, as a percentage, use more of it than they do in Europe or in Asia? In fact, it depends. Every <coughs> part of the world has a, has a difference. For example, in the US, the people use a lot, women use a lot of makeup. Uh, in, uh, in Europe, they use a lot of fragrances. And, uh, and in Asia, they use a lot of skincare. So there, there are some specialties right. uh, across the world. So let's talk about uh, uh, L'Oreal itself. The company is based in France, but uh, the, your biggest market is at the United States? Yeah. France, in fact, the business in France is still very small. Enfin, it's now very small. It's 7% uh, of the total. The U.S. is the number one market, at least 25%. And now uh, Asia is becoming very strong, too. Uh, Asia, China uh, will, will certainly become bigger and bigger. Of course, there are billions of consumers there. Let's go through how you came to L'Oreal. Um, you grew up in Paris. Paris. And did you say when you were a young boy, I want to run L'Oreal someday? <laughs> Not really. In fact, when I was really young, 15 years old, I was trying to understand what type of job I would like to do. And I had three ideas. One was to be a psych psychiatrist. Psychiatrist? How do you say that? Yeah, psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? Yes. Psychiatrist. <laughs> Typical um, for a French. You didn't miss anything there. <laughs> 
uh, or a movie director, well, uh, oh, okay. or business. Uh, and at the end, I, I chose business. And, but the funny thing is that uh, in my job every day, I, I do a little bit of the three. Uh, <laughs> because, because marketing is about you know, understanding really the desires and dreams and uh, wishes of the people. Uh, it's a lot about the movie uh, direction too because you create images and everything. So it's, uh, I'm pretty happy. In fact, I was able to put all together. Well, when you went to school, um, I think you took a finance class I read and yeah. uh, the professor said in effect, you're very good at marketing, not finance. Is that <laughs> right? Yes, yes, yes. I know that you're a finance uh, expert, but me, me I'm, I'm, I, I have to admit that I'm very bad in finance. So. So I chose the uh, finance major because it was uh, trendy at the time. And, but every uh, business case we had about finance, I always recommended to change the advertising. So, <clears throat> so they, the guy said at the end, you know, Jean-Paul, you're, you're really gifted, but not for finance. Do marketing. All right, All right so how did you come to L'Oreal? You graduated from college. Yeah. Uh, so I went to business school. And, uh, and uh, at, at the end of the business school, uh, in fact, when once I knew that I was made for marketing, uh, I, I really looked for the most uh, interesting marketing. And I, th uh, and I found and I still think that uh, beauty is what I call the supreme art of marketing. Because it's really about, uh, of course, understanding uh, all the technicalities, but it's also about intuition, uh, perception, uh, creation. It's the, it's the most interesting okay. marketing. Right. After a brief period of time, they said, you're now in charge of Greece. Ah, yeah, it didn't uh, arrive like that. You know, it's, uh, well, I thought it was you a, bit, a bit more shaky than that. You know, first I started as a salesman. Uh, because at Loyal, you always start, uh, you know, as a salesman to, for one year, one and a half year. Then I, I did some marketing, finally. Uh, and, but that was a bit uh, turbulent, you know. Uh, and, uh, and once I was called by the, uh, the, the big uh, head of uh, HR at Loyal at, at that time, so I was a bit afraid because I thought that uh, maybe they were going to fire me or something. And, uh, and the guy said, uh, Mr. Agon, uh, we want you to go to Greece and take over the subsidiary as general manager. So I was extremely, wow, uh, proud, happy, uh, surprised. You were 24 years old. 24 years old, so I went there. And then I realized, number one, that the business was uh, extremely tiny. Number two, in a terrible state. <laughs> uh, but number three, more importantly, that in fact, uh, the people at Loyal had proposed a job to almost everyone <laughs> and that no one wanted to take it. Because okay. they were not crazy, I was the only one a bit... Uh, you so know. you did the job? Yes, I and, loved it. And you must have done well because you, you got promoted. What did you do next? Uh, after that, I came back from... I spent five years in Greece, I loved it. And, and really what's interesting is that I really learned everything in Greece. I learned, I learned marketing, sales, human resource, uh, finance, uh, that's why, my, by the way, my finance is not, think, and, not yeah. that good. <laughs> and then I came back and, uh, and uh, I, I became a general manager of the L'Oreal Paris brand in France. Okay. And later you were put in charge of uh, Asia? I went to Asia, uh, started all the subsidiaries in Asia, in China, Korea. Yeah, went to China, for example, people were using cosmetics and other kinds of beauty products, they just weren't using L'Oreal, is that right? At that time, no, because uh, we, we had no, no, no subsidiary, no team, no, nothing. And, and by the way, it was a bit late because uh, we started everything in 97, which was a bit late. Right. Many competitors were already there. And so we started with a team of uh, 10 people in an apartment. And, uh, and I'm very happy to say that now we are number one in China. Uh, and China is a major part of our uh, growth and, uh, and business. And then after China and Asia, you came to the United States. You were put in charge of the United States? Yes. And was your English perfect then as it is now? Or? Uh, thank you for the perfect. <laughs> for example, psychiatrist is still difficult for me. <laughs> I have a few words that are still a bit difficult. Um, it's pretty good. But I'm working on it. <laughs> How long did you live in New York? Uh, five years. Five years. In fact, I just arrived, uh, I re just arrived two days before uh, September 11. Uh, and I, and I, as I said, you know, I told my wife before I came here, uh, you know, we'll go to New York, it's fantastic, you love it, it's safe, it's quiet, it's uh, easy. And, and in fact, we arrived uh, the weekend before, 
and the kids started at school uh, the, the day before. It was a Monday, and September 11 happened on Tuesday. So you later moved back to uh, France, and you became the CEO in 2006. Yeah. And the chairman and CEO in 2011. Yeah. And since you've been the CEO, the stock is up 200%. Uh, more. Uh, more. More. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. 400%. 400%. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. And, um, and it's not finished. <laughs> okay. And um, the market value of your company today is about $140 billion? Yeah. What was it when you took over? Four times this. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> People are happier when they use your products. Absolutely. And the happiness quotient is very no, no, but it's, it's very important because uh, we, we also are very convinced at L'Oréal that, uh, that it, it's, a great, it's a great industry, you know, it's a, it's a great job. You, you, you make, by creating beauty products, you make, you make people more happy, you make people have a better uh, self-confidence, self-esteem. Uh, it's, it's a very positive uh, thing. Let's talk about some of the things you did. Now, one of the things that you've been very focused on is gender equality. Yeah, and today, uh, you know, two thirds of the, of the employees in, at L'Oreal are women, and uh, it's 50% uh, of the board, it's one third of the executive committee, it's 50% of all the management okay. committees. And so we, uh, we, we are really doing uh, everything it takes. Okay. With some of your other major competitors, I don't know if you want me to mention them, but other very good companies like Estee Lauder, or um, uh, Unilever. I heard about them. Yes. yes. Um, but they, <laughs> the products that the, the CEOs are often men, and the people in charge of the beauty products are often men, even though they don't use the products. Is that strike you as somewhat unusual, or is that going to change in the future, you think? Yeah, it's going to change. Of course, it's going to change. You know, it's, uh, it was at the beginning more, more men, and, and definitely, you know, uh, in the next few years, uh, women will take over. I mean, uh, and uh, certainly, uh, uh, may, maybe not uh, in the very next future, but certainly uh, a, a woman will become a CEO of L'Oreal. Um, on sustainability, that has been another major push of yeah. yours. What are you trying to do on sustainability, and what are you trying to do in terms of your carbon footprint? The Carbon Disclosure Project, the CDP, which is really the authority in terms of uh, environment, as a, as a world at L'Oreal, for the third year in a row, uh, the triple A uh, recognition, A for forest, for water, for carbon impact. We are also, on this matter, recognized as the number one company in terms of sustainability. One of your other pushes has been for strong ethics. Why is yeah. ethics so important to you? When I took over as a, as a, as a CEO, uh, I understood that ethics would, would be uh, something very important uh, for, the, for the future. And uh, again, you know, uh, I, I decided uh, with, the, with the team that, that loyal should be, could be, uh, number one in ethics. If I may say two words here, is that, <clears throat> of course, you know, if you think of L'Oreal, it's not that difficult for us to be uh, a great uh, company in terms of sustainability. Ethics is not really a problem in our industry, uh, and gender equality also. But we could have said, okay, it's not difficult for us, so let's forget it and do something else. On the contrary, what we said, it's not that difficult, so let's be exemplary and let's be the number one in the world. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some of your products, uh, your brand names. Yeah. Now, do you have uh, uh, the L'Oreal brand name? Is that what you sell a lot of products under that name? It's 25% uh, of our sales. You know, we have uh, 30 more brands, 35 international brands, and, uh, and L'Oreal is just one of them. And in fact, it's the only brand that we didn't buy. Uh, it's, okay. uh, it was the brand that we started with, and all the other brands that we have in the portfolio were bought at a certain right. time. So, for example, this is uh, Lancome. You bought yes. that, and yes. and is that your upscale or not upscale? Or? Of course, it's beautiful. Look, it's uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's very upscale, and it's it's extremely successful. It's uh, the number one uh, luxury uh, uh, beauty brand in the world now. Uh, okay. So very successful. All right. What everywhere. about? Now, there's another brand here, Urban Decay. Yes. Now, that doesn't sound like a name for somebody that's going to say this is a great product. It's Decay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> decay is not usually a word that means something people but like. So why yeah. is Urban Decay a good name? Uh, it's, I agree. It's a bit surprising. But uh, clearly, it's not for the same consumers. Huh? The, 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 the consumers who love Lancôme, they, they don't okay. use Urban Decay. 
But you know, it's pretty edgy, it's pretty surprising, it's pretty disruptive, so th there, there is a segment of consumers who love that. And now Maybelline, you own Maybelline? Yeah. And where is that sold? Is that sold in department stores? No, no, it, it is sold in, uh, in uh, drug stores, uh, mass stores, uh, Walmart, uh, Target. So, so like if, if some woman is in front of you and she's wearing Maybelline lipstick, could you tell it's not L'Oreal lipstick? In other words, can you tell the difference in the brands? Uh, not from uh, far away, right. but... Uh, <laughs> well, okay, I guess that's the point, though. Okay. Especially so, if they can have access to the bag. <laughs> we'll <laughs> so uh, you have all these products, uh, and you're a man, so you don't use a lot of these products. Presumably your wife maybe uses some of these, but of you don't use all these products. How do you make a judgment about whether it's a good product or not? Who actually makes these judgments for you? The president of the brand. You know, we are, we are pretty decentralized. We have an organization at, uh, at L'Oreal where we are strategically concentrated, but operationally very decentralized. So there is for each brand a, a team, uh, what we call an international marketing team, and there is a, a president for, the, for each brand. So they don't have to come to you to get each product approved? Or? No, no. And does your wife sample any of them for you? or No, <laughs> no she, she couldn't try uh, the, the thousands of products that we are launching every year. No matter how old a woman might be, she could be over 100, she's still using cosmetics and makeup and so forth. Absolutely. Did you observe that as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, it's a great opportunity because with the aging of the population, uh, uh, for the beauty industry and for Laura in particular, it's fantastic because not only, of course, the longer you live, the longer you will use beauty products, but also the older you are, the more you need uh, great quality products. So people are happier when they use your products. Absolutely. And the happiness quotient is very no, high. No, but it's, it's very important because uh, we, we also are very convinced at L'Oreal that, uh, that it, it's, a great, it's a great industry. You know, it's a, it's a great job. I mean, you, you, you make, by creating beauty products, you make, you make people more happy, you make people have a better self-confidence, self-esteem. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a very positive uh, thing. So do you think anybody can spend too much money on cosmetics? No, you know, it's no, not expensive. Not possible. <laughs> No, you know, you know that, that's also the good thing, is that the, the, the budget that is allocated to, uh, to, to beauty products is very limited. It's between 2 or 3% of your, of your income, so it's, it's okay, it's fine, and it makes your life more beautiful. I think also it contributes a lot to your quality okay. of life. It's okay. a, I think it's a cheap way to improve really your quality of life. So what products do you have for people who are men who are in, like in their 60s who don't want to look like they're in their 60s? What do you, what do you have for them? <laughs> Kiehl's. Oh, really? Kiehl's is fantastic. And Kiehl's is an American brand. You know, we, we bought it. Uh, what does it do for you? Sorry? What does it do? You mean for me personally? Well, for me. <laughs> the product. Look. Okay, so uh, uh, what about... Everything. What's the best way to get a job with L'Oreal? Call me. Really? <laughs> Great. Well, that might be tough to get a hold of you, but okay. No, no, very easy. You know, you can email me, uh, uh, and I look at my email every day, and I answer them every day, wow. directly. Let's just talk about France for a moment, uh, because Americans are always interested in France. Um, we talked earlier, and like all French people, you take four-week vacation. Is that a requirement to be French, to take four weeks? Because when you want to get somebody <laughs> in the office in, in like, August in Paris, you can never get them in the office. So what do you, how, how is that? Is that a custom or something? That you, it's mandatory. It take, <laughs> mandatory. You take four weeks off. No, but it's a, it's a habit. But you know, when I was here, I, I used to take two weeks vacation. And I was in, when I was in Asia, I, uh, I think I didn't take any vacation. And when I came back to, to France, uh, I thought that these French were crazy to take four weeks vacation. And I have to say that after a while, it, it I like it. It one. <laughs> so you know President Macron? Yep. So like when you're with President Macron and his wife, does she ever say, you know, is L'Oreal product a good one for me or is this a good product? Do you have any, she ever asked for any beauty tips I, or I advice? think I can say that uh, Brigitte Macron loves the L'Oreal products. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Uh, I was with her, in fact, uh, last uh, week uh, and, uh, and... She had all L'Oreal. Said that. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So uh, I wanted to ask you today, um, how do you think the U.S.-French relations are? I think the relations between, between French and American are excellent. 
uh, at, uh, at uh, the political level, they may be a bit, uh, a bit different, but uh, I think it's not the most important. The most important is the, the quality of the relationship between the people. I, I had the experience when I was here in, uh, in 2004. Uh, there was a time in 2004 when there was this, uh, you know, this French bashing story with the Freedom Fries, etc. And, uh, and even at that time, when the relationship in terms of political uh, agenda were, were tough, the relationship at, uh, at the people level were always great. So for a lot of uh, business people in France and other places, you're a role model. You've done a terrific job with L'Oreal. What you. would you say is the secret to being a good business leader? I know that for me, the, the most important thing is to love what you do. You know, uh, I was very lucky because when I joined L'Oreal when I was 21, uh, after a few weeks, a few months, I knew that this company was uh, made for me. Uh, you know, uh, it was obvious. Mm -hmm. And, and when, you, when, you, when you feel like that, when you love what you do, when you're so happy to uh, wake up every morning and, and do what you have to do, I mean, I think that after that, it's, uh, it's an easy, uh, easy journey. So do people always try to get free products from you? I mean, in other words, <laughs> you know, lots of people say I'm having a show or we're having some uh, charity thing and we'd like some free products. You have a division that just decides whether you give free products out to various <laughs> things or not. You know, when they, when they want free products from us, it, it means that uh, they, they like them. So it's, uh, it's okay. We encourage that. All right, here's some questions, uh, if we could. Uh, how is L'Oreal approaching e-commerce, especially with products that are uh, difficult to market digitally, uh, for example, color match, foundations, perfume, and how do you compete with nimble, digitally native uh, brands uh, that are building engaged communities online? Oh, but we compete very well. You know, uh, for, for example, in China, we uh, e-commerce is uh, representing, uh, for example, for our mass products, almost 50% of the business. Globally speaking, uh, our e-commerce has grown by 40% last year which is fast, more, much faster than the, than the market itself, and it represents now more than 10% of our sales. So, in fact, we are competing very well. What's the best way to get a job with L'Oreal? <laughs> Call me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, um, that might be tough to get a hold of you, but okay. No, no, very easy. You know, you can email me, uh, uh, and I look at my email every day, and I answer them every day. Wow. Directly. So, and it's very easy. It's jeanpaul.agon uh, at loyal.com. Suppose somebody wants not an entry level job, they want a senior <laughs> job. <laughs> Maybe. Whatever the job. <laughs> okay, so um, can you tell if a woman comes close to you and she's got perfume on, can you tell if it's a L'Oreal brand? Or perfume? Perfume. Yeah, you normally yes. Normally yes. Really? Not always, but normally yes. And if she's wearing. Uh, you know, cosmetics, you can pretty much tell if she's wearing a L'Oreal? <laughs> it's a bit more difficult. <laughs> you have to get very close, which sometimes is a bit uh, tricky. <laughs> is there anything that makes you nervous at night and you can't sleep because the world is uh, troubled in certain no, areas relating no. to your company? I think that my number one strength is that I sleep very well. Really? Uh, I sleep uh, eight hours a night and uh, every night and uh, nothing uh, wakes me up. Really? Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's... Uh, it's not serious, but uh, uh, it's the truth. Well, um, you're very fortunate to be able to sleep that long. Um, so, okay. Um, I saw that, I saw that uh, Jeff Bezos uh, Yes, I, I did interview him. He said yeah, uh, I eight hours is what he needs a night, but uh, yeah. you know, he's still younger. When he gets in his late 60s, I doubt if he'll be able to make it through the night uh, <laughs> uh, sleeping without uh, waking up. But okay, you never know. So um, I want to thank you very much for giving thank us an insight to what it's like to run a major beauty products company. Thank and you I want to thank you for... Um, all the advice you've given me about things I could do to look better. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a great honor for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David.